Okay. <laughs> I, um, sort of, I know I look like hell, but, um, I've been extremely busy and, um, I'm <clears throat> catching up on, uh, I'm catching up on my film editing. Okay, so, um, I'm making a, okay, I've been a colon hygienist for 11 years. I've worked with, I'm guessing, thousands of people. And um, I had a client who was coming to see me. He um, was very excited about colonics and then started dating this woman. And she wanted to try colonics also. Um, her name is Mandy. And she did um she bought a series of three colonics she came for one colonic she completely hated it and um it didn't come back so her boyfriend at the time sean uh asked if he could use her colonics and i agreed to it about a year after that uh sean called me and said that he wanted to do five colonics and that his girlfriend mandy wanted to also do um five colonics and I said well if she decides not to do the colonics then there's not a refund and it's only for her she had to commit to it so she agreed to it and um, uh, you know it was nothing too memorable about it and I, I wasn't really thinking I don't think I even knew that Mandy had some sort of a rare illness um, so after her fifth colonic, um, about a day later, I got a phone call, and it was from Mandy, and she uh, told me that not too. She told me that she was mad at me because um, I had somehow affected her uh, poop schedule, and she was on a hike and had to go number two, and she was mad at me because then she had to go to the woods. And uh, upon looking down at her poop, she saw a worm wiggling in it. And I asked her, I said, okay, it didn't fall from a bush or it wasn't crawling from the ground, but it was literally in your poop. And she said, yes. So um, then um, I told her that once you know that you have a parasite, that there's generally more than one in there. It would be important for her to um, c commit to doing a series of colonics, which um, uh, money was tight, so um, she was slightly hesitant, and I made her an offer. I said, look, I'm going to film the process of you um, removing these parasites, and I'm going to document it on the film, and then um, we'll see what happens. Uh, and I'm going to... I'm going to cut my rate by more than half. So, um, I made several films, uh, just, just very, um, in a, in a relaxed kind of manner, and, uh, she didn't want her face to be filmed. So, uh, I had very few choices as to what I filmed, but I listened back, uh, recently, this is from roughly one year ago that she was here, and, um, it was a series of unfoldings that I really had no idea regarding a rare illness that she had. And this is the process of, this is the, um, this film is just documenting uh, time in Mandy's life uh, while she lived in Nashville. And um, she did a series of 16 additional colonics. And I started filming I think at about number eight, I tried to get film on each one. Some I think I missed, but um, I'm going back and um, I haven't shaved. I'm just catching up on my film footage. And uh, anyway, that's the introduction to the story of my client, Mandy. So we're documenting this. This is um, colonic number nine. 
<clears throat> and uh, anyway, you had, t tell me, like, where are you at? You had s uh, s some testing done, and yes. then it, they found additional growths. So, six months ago, I had uh, um, one 12 millimeter tumor on my pancreas. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this right by your phone. Okay. Okay. And then, um, I was, you know, scheduled to come in for my follow-up, uh -huh. and which, with this disease, they say, you know, that's an integral part of it because there's no cure, so to monitor mm -hmm. when you have tumors mm -hmm. is important, mm -hmm. and um, so I, you know, actually felt pretty good and I thought it was very possible for um, me to go in and it and, and the tumor to be gone. Mm -hmm. I mean I thought that that was going to happen actually. Mm -hmm. But I went in and so I got the call last week that after my last CAT scan mm -hmm. that um, they found lesions in my lungs yeah and another one or two tumor on my pancreas small small, small tumors small I believe I don't really know to be okay honest. so I'm gonna put this right here you have a camera behind you okay so um, of course I mean was shocking. I mean, it's nothing you want to hear at 40 years old, you know, it just feels, I don't know, just, I wasn't really ready, but I actually felt this enormous sense of, like, joy and gratitude to be here in this mm. world and, like, to just grateful that I'm here and that I want to be here. I mean, the first thing I thought of was my kids, of course, because that's like, I mean, it's not that I don't have my own life, but I'd say that's like my primary reason for living is to raise them and love them well and make sure that they are nurtured up. I get the CAT scan, to another CAT scan tomorrow. Mm -hmm. that's that's a more invasive type of a CAT scan. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But um, the lesions in my lungs, that scares me. Is that something new? Yeah. Can you feel them? No. Nope. Okay. Do the lesions come and go, or what do you know about lesions? I know nothing about them. So they didn't tell you anything, they just said you have lesions, but will they sit down and then tell you what it means, or do they don't know? Well, I guess after this next CAT scan, they will. I thought about that when I go in tomorrow, that I might try to just see if the doctor has five minutes to say, to tell me, to answer that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what does it mean to have lesions in your lungs? Mm -hmm. And like, how many? Did they just say lesions? They said some was in the word. The some. Mm -hmm. And does the average person have lesions in their lungs? No, no. No. I don't know. I just felt a real sense of anxiety last night. It's been a struggle. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I, I felt so positive and grateful that mm -hmm. last night, I guess, I just... You know, I'm sure all this is stages and it's part to process. Mm -hmm. Early stages. Yeah, way early. So it's going to be fine. I mean, it really will be. I believe. You can hold it. You want to film me? Sure. Okay. So, um,. I'm going to Bonnaroo, but, you know, I have a free ticket to Bonnaroo, and you might think that that's uh, just an incredible free gift, 
but what I'm noticing is that life is in this sort of series of um, like you felt joy you were describing that you felt joy at a certain yeah. point and you felt gratitude to be alive and um, and then you, in follow up you felt some fear and so I've been working with this um, guy who has terminal cancer and what's interesting to note is um, the things that upset him like a dropped cell phone call like he was trying to reach his wife and he couldn't and he was so upset by that and um, you would think if the possibility is that you're not going to be right. living much longer that things like a <clears throat> dropped cell phone call wouldn't be a big issue right and so when you start to put things in perspective then you say well we're all here for a limited time right so you know even if you're if he's here for another month then that could be annoying for him and it could be annoying for me if I'm here technically the average lifespan I would be here maybe less than another 30 years but still 30 years is enough time you think I could afford to be upset about a cell phone call so then you know something like Bonnaroo which you know there's like tens of thousands of people who are paying a lot of money to be there and then I'm a little bit ho-hum about it and so then as far as doing anything in life, why would I do anything that I'm somewhat ho-hum about? Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because um, I might be surprised mm -hmm. and I want to spend time with my girlfriend and she and I really, like as far as responsibilities go, she and I haven't really had a lot of time to just spend it together with not, no very few responsibilities mm -hmm. at Bonnaroo. And, um, there's a lot of other things that I need to be doing and want to be doing. And then sometimes in life you just need to completely take a break. Like your car goes off a cliff and then you find yourself at the bottom of the cliff. Mm -hmm. And then you start noticing the birds and the squirrels and the, the trees and the flowers. And you say, wow, if I hadn't gone off the cliff, I wouldn't have ever noticed this. And so that's, for me, what Bonnaroo is. It's like my car is going off of a cliff and I'm going to land somewhere where there will be really great music and interesting people and opportunities for things that I don't normally get to experience and once it's over then it's done so I'm just going to sort of leap into this giant crazy dragon of a festival and um, hopefully come out the other side that's how I feel about it <laughs> <laughs> how's that I think that's good. Is it a good way to document it? Yeah. Are you going to camp or are you going to stay in a camper? Camp. Tent. Mm, you brave man. Why? There's lots and lots of campers. It'll be good. Yeah. It'd be like if you went down to the freeway and started hitchhiking and said, uh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go and then you pick a town on the map. I'm right. going to go to Cleveland. See what's going on. Probably be a mistake to go to Cleveland. Though. Yeah, probably. We can go to better. like Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, you're yeah. I've yeah. actually hitchhiked to Boulder, Colorado Did in my you? lifetime. That's not a good way to raise birds. <laughs> this is our camp at Bonnaroo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? oh, you really? got a video camera, I see. <laughs> and oh, so uh, I was expecting oh, still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? Well, I was saying that like. Through this process, I've started to like grow through my ignorance. Where mm -hmm. when I first was coming in here, I mean, I was so like it was such so begrudgingly so, mm -hmm. and I was I didn't like it for all the surface reasons. Mm -hmm. But as I've started to do this, like. I understand how powerful, I'm beginning to really understand how powerful and amazing that it is to to have this service. As a matter of fact, I've even been thinking that we may have to move and I, literally, you are on like my top five of things like, how will I ever get that replaced? How will I ever have you replaced? How well, you guys might move to Louisville? Well, it's a thought. I mean, mm. just because of everything I'm going through with the stuff, you know, 
know? Yeah. And, um, and you were literally one of my first thoughts because I was like, through this growing process, I started to research and educate myself and start to understand how powerful and important this is to do this. Yeah. So before I looked at it as like, oh my gosh, I don't want to. And now I'm starting to see that it's like, how lucky am I to have this powerful, like I read last night that colonic is a cleansing as three days, uh, equal to three days of fasting. And so there's so many things that this is doing and, and so many people that have cancer and all the detox programs and things like that that include colonics and how essential the colonics are. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just beginning to know just how important mm -hmm. this is. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's great. That's what you want. Oh my God! Look how much is coming out. Oh my God! This is day what? Ten? Oh my God! Day ten. Tenth colonic. And you've also been on a, a five days of five days raw, raw food fast. Yes. Are you eating a lot of garlic and onions? No. You should be. Right. I was. I've, I've been eating onions, but not garlic. Garlic it will sting the parasites. Uh. Oh my gosh. You want? I would consume some raw garlic. Okay. And it it burns them. Now I've heard that that is a sign of parasites. These little things at the bottom. What? These little. You can barely see them. It looks like sand coming out. Oh, I see it. I've read that if you get little black or sandy looking things at the bottom, that that's a sign of a parasite. Oh my gosh. 